This is layer four of the Internet Mysteries iceberg. Today we continue our journey down this iceberg. Topics include the tragic event with Ruth Price, the disturbing Paris catacombs found footage, and the mysterious calls from Charles Peck. To perfect this series, I've made adjustments to the audio, and I've been playing around with the editing software. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let's jump right in. 973. This refers to an old website filled with links, puzzles, creepy images, and pages and pages of nearly endless cryptic texts. Some internet users claim to have found over 100,000 different pages of this elaborate website and a forum section. The mystery of 973 refers to why it exists. What's its purpose? And no one has an answer. Members of the forum don't like new members, and contacting them wasn't too much fun, and I didn't get any answers. Looking into the domain owner, I was able to find that it was owned by an artist until 2014, and even then, it still hasn't stopped growing. Thousands of pages have been added since 2014. Perhaps it's an art project, a cult, or maybe just gibberish. We don't know. Jeff the Killer original image. The mystery surrounding this entry revolves around this popular old creepypasta image's origin. For decades, no one has been able to find the original image that spawned this creepypasta. There are hundreds of fake images and stories surrounding the entry. Search efforts to find the original image led to a $10,000 bounty by a YouTuber called Mutahar. In his video, he describes the difficulty in searching for the image. And he didn't even find it. No one has. If you think you can find it, there's a good bounty for it. Also, there is a video out by Scare Theater. He clickbaited everyone into thinking he found the original image. He did not. Laughing Horses Orifice Headquarters. This one I can't show you guys on YouTube. This website contains flashing lights, inappropriate images, and leaked emails and contact information on government officials. It's like a creepypasta version of WikiLeaks, which will be covered in a later video. I don't recommend visiting this website, nor will I advocate for its contents. Ruth Price Ruth Price refers to the authenticity of an audio recording of a lady who called the police. Uh, this is uh, Ruth Price of 3877. What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, well, there's some guy been um, checking the place out. How? Oh. Well, he went in the back. I have an apartment in the back, and he said he was looking for a guy. And he comes to my door. And yes. And uh, said he's uh, looking for an apartment. So I'm, I live alone, and I'm an old lady. Mm -hmm. where, where is he now, ma'am? I don't have no idea. She gets ambushed, and the audio ends. I will not play that part of the audio to appease the YouTube gods, so use your imagination. With that out of the way, is it a real audio recording of a real Ruth Price? This was a mystery for years. The earliest theories suggest that the audio recording was used for 911 operator training. If you listen to the beginning of the audio, you'll notice the operator does not ask for the caller's location. Uh, this is uh, Ruth Price of 3877. What's the problem, ma'am? Oh, well, there's some guy been um, checking the place out. This gives some credence to it being a training example, because all 911 operators are obligated to ask for the location of the caller to send help faster. Several internet users came forward claiming to have heard the audio in training as it was used to weed out recruits that couldn't handle the distress of 911 call. Others came forward claiming it was fabricated to demonstrate why it's very important to ask for location. First thing. Well, after doing some digging, the internet found that this was real. Using news banks, the articles proved that Ruth Price was attacked by a man peeking into her house. She did survive the attack as the perpetrator fled after attacking her. This took place in San Diego in 1980. This is important as 911 emergency services weren't implemented in San Diego until 1982. This could explain why the operator didn't ask for Ruth's location, as it wasn't an established rule. 4chan alien picture. Classic internet bait, but a clever one. On 4chan, for just one minute, a post came alive showing an alien near Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. After a minute passed, the whole site went down. When the site was finally online, the post was gone. No one was able to find the original image, as no one saved it to their phone, and no one knew if it was real or not. People speculated that the government wanted the site taken down and all evidence of the alien picture removed, some 4chan users claimed that they were banned if they discussed the topic. This was false, and multiple threads discussing the event are still online today. 
It wasn't until the original poster came forward and explained that it was all a hoax and that they uploaded the fake alien image right before the website was going to shut down just for maintenance. A clever, well-timed internet prank. Nothing more. Paris Catacombs found footage. Let me get this out of the way first. It is very illegal to navigate or enter the catacombs. Don't go in there. With that out of the way, the Paris Catacombs found footage is a reference to a popular internet urban legend and a creepypasta story. The legend suggests that an individual stumbled upon a hidden, uncharted section of the Paris Catacombs and recorded their experience on video. It's very bizarre. His arrows point in a direction. Occasionally also, he stops to photograph roomfuls of bones, which means that he's very, very deep inside the catacombs. The story often includes descriptions of eerie encounters with the supernatural, strange symbols. The Paris catacombs are real underground ossuaries in Paris, France, where the remains of millions of people are stored in a vast network of tunnels and chambers. The found footage story, however, is considered a work of fiction created for entertainment purposes. It's part of the internet lore and urban legends that add an air of mystery and horror to real-world locations. There are numerous variations and adaptations of this legend, often shared in the form of stories or videos online. Calls from Charles Peck This is a tragic and eerie incident that occurred in 2008. Charles Peck was a passenger on a commuter train in California that collided with a freight train in a devastating crash. Tragically, Charles. Peck was among the 25 people killed, and family began receiving phone calls from his cell phone, even though he had perished in the collision. Over several hours, they received a total of 35 calls from his phone. These calls provided a glimmer of hope to the family, who believed he might have miraculously survived. However, the calls were later determined to be the result of the cell phone's automatic redial feature, and there was no sign of Charles Peck being alive. This incident, while necessarily an internet mystery in the traditional sense, became a subject of fascination and discussions online. It's a poignant and unsettling example of how technology and coincidence can contribute to unusual and emotionally charged events. Sakhalin Island Sea Wolf In August of 2006, a weird and unusual animal beached itself on the Sakhalin shoreline. The Sakhalin area is situated near Japan. It's the most eastern part of Russia. The corpse was found by Russian soldiers. The mystery around this entry revolved around its highly unusual appearance. Theories suggested it was some ancestral unknown creature, or even an alien. The wiki claims that bones and teeth are not of a fish. According to its skeletal remains, it was not a crocodile or alligator. Its skull resembled that of a canine, while the creature's rear coincides with that of a fish. However, the real identity can be concluded by looking at the skull. It's most likely some type of whale, particularly a beluga or an orca, with the skull matching that of such creatures. This is likely just a decomposed whale. Strange sounds, fine. 96.7 FM. This entry revolves around a radio station in Oregon playing odd and random clips at seemingly random times. Other times, they reported hearing buzzing and distorted audio, similar to a broadcast hijacking. This would go on for months. Locals decided to look into this and discovered that the owner of the 96.7 was none other than the Community Alliance of Tenants. Of all the possibilities, we have a non-profit organization running this radio broadcast. Why? What do they have to do with this? Well, the Community Alliance of Tenants, or CAT, is a membership organization for low-income housing for families struggling financially or with disabilities to fight against Oregon's housing crisis. What is an affordable housing association doing running a radio broadcast? Well, digging into the history, we found that in 2014, they acquired the license to broadcast to promote their cause. And that's it. They own the broadcast. So what are they doing playing distorted sounds and random audio recordings? When internet users reached out to the broadcast owners, they were met with an unusual response. They were told that the owners had no idea that their broadcast, which they had paid for, had been playing any of the reported noises, and then wouldn't speak further. If you ask me, I would show a little more concern than them that my broadcast is potentially being hijacked. Of course, they could also be in on it. 
If you had a radio broadcast and you wanted to drive traffic to that broadcast, why not play some distorted audio once in a while to see if that catches some attention? I believe this is the case. You have 30 days to pay me $5 million. This is a weird entry. The title of the entry relates to a YouTube video of someone demanding money while showing a quote-unquote discovery inside an Egyptian pyramid. The uploader wasn't asking for the money for the discovery to be released, but rather to prevent them from releasing it to the public. Perhaps the uploader found something the Egyptian government didn't want to be released. I'm not sure. In the video, the uploader uses a drone to travel inside the pyramid. The video ends, and people wait to see what will happen. 30 days later, the 5 million wasn't paid. The uploader then released the second half of the video, not to YouTube, but to a personal website. There, the second video was released, only to disappoint everyone. The video ends with a blurry end card saying that the user didn't have any more footage and didn't want people to look for the shaft for their safety. After further digging, the best conclusion was that this was an elaborate plan to get a podcast on the map. The uploader wanted to release a podcast discussing their findings inside the pyramid, but said it was in the works. This was over 10 years ago, and I couldn't find any evidence of their discovery inside the pyramid, or a legitimate podcast. October 28th, 2011. On the surface, this mystery began when internet users found a website designed for what looks like a cult recruiting site or a religious event, similar to the first entry in this video. The religious event would take place on that date. After the date of the website passed, internet users found a phone number connected to that website and calling the number would result in something strange. On the other end of the phone line, you could hear loud breathing and then followed by a beeping sound. While the purpose of the website is unknown, it's even harder to find out now as the website has been taken down. It's for sale if any of you want to make creepy pasta out of it again. Mariana's Web To understand this entry, let's talk about the surface web, deep web, and dark web. I love iceberg so much that we will use an iceberg to explain this entry. Then it's considered surface web. This involves username and passcode protected sites, Netflix, and even some YouTube videos. If Google can't find it, it's here. And as you can see, this layer is vastly larger than the surface layer. Estimates have a hard time precisely estimating the size of the deep web, but this is a good ballpark reference. Now, let's talk about the dark web. The dark web is only accessible with special software. The most popular software is the openly free Tor or the Onion Router. Using Tor allows you to access .onion sites, and Tor gives you nearly pure anonymous browsing. This gives people the ability to browse the internet without being tracked and the activity on the dark web allows for criminal activity. Notably, the Silk Road was famous for selling illegal substances online. Now this is generally it when it comes to the size and layers of the internet. This entry called the Marianas Web refers to a supposed fourth layer to this entry and is named after the Marina's Trench, which is the deepest point in the ocean. While there is no proof that Marianas Web exists, the rumors persist. People suggested that Marianas Web contained a secret society held all the government secrets, or had nuclear codes stored within. Nonetheless, it's not real. Red Rooms Now that we understand the dark web, let's dive right into one of the most notorious examples of criminal activity to take place. Red Rooms are a mysterious subject. They're live streams of people harming other people. The chat will donate money and then get to decide what happens to the victim. It is truly a disturbing situation. The mystery behind it revolves around whether or not it is real. The first thing to come to mind is Tor. While it allows you to be fully anonymous on the web, its data speed is very slow, making live streaming nearly impossible, thus discrediting the story. However, they do exist, well sort of, and so do scams. Since the earliest mention of Red Rooms, people have gone on the dark web hosting a fake Red Room event and then scamming people out of their money by not harming anyone. Despite all this, stories of laggy frame-by-frame -frame Red Room live streams persist to this day. And that concludes Layer 4 of this iceberg. Happy Holidays, everyone. I hope this video was entertaining. It takes around 20 hours for me to produce a video like this. But I don't mind. As long as you're entertained, I'll keep doing it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Peace.